If you have strabismus like me or a lazy eye, then you might be looking for solutions, trying to figure out how to make your eyes straight or your eyes work better together. And if you've been doing any sort of research on this, you've probably come across the idea of vision therapy. And if you're doing vision therapy, hopefully your office that you're going to is using virtual reality. Virtual reality is done on a headset, like something like this. And it's a super awesome tool for helping with strabismus, lazy eye, amblyopia, any of those sorts of things. So today I wanna to talk to you about which virtual reality headset is the best and why I think that. I am a total expert. I've tried both Vivid Vision and Optics Trainer, which are both on the Oculus Go and on the Oculus Quest. So these are the two that I'm comparing today. So the Oculus Go versus the Oculus Quest. Now, really quick, I'm just gonna do a quick breakdown of what this even is. If you've never heard of vision therapy, never heard of virtual reality, here's like the 30 second version. Um, if you have strabismus like me, then your eyes aren't straight. And you know, my this right eye turns in slightly. So what that means is that my eyes aren't working together and they're not seeing the same image. And so what happens is with virtual reality, each eye is seeing a different screen. And so those screens can be adjusted so that this screen can be moved in to match my eyes and my eyes can learn to fuse and put those images together. And then eventually you move the screens out straight and my eye eventually goes straight. Um, there's also things in there if you have amblyopia and one eye is stronger than the other eye, they can, you know, make it so that only the right eye can see, you know, if there's a spaceship game, only the right eye can see the spaceship and the left eye can see the rings that the spaceship is going through. And so it forces both eyes to work together. Super cool technology. I love it. I'm so glad I'm alive in 2020 when this even exists. So I want to go into a little bit about the difference between these two headsets and why I think that the Oculus Quest is an obvious choice. I wouldn't even, I I don't, I'm not even gonna try to like say, oh, both are good, just get the Quest. So if you're gonna stop watching, get the Quest. But if you wanna know why and my reasoning behind it and my experience, then you can keep on watching. So this is the Oculus Go. It comes with one remote and it's super lightweight, which is one thing that I do love about it. Very lightweight, easy to adjust the straps and everything. I'm not gonna go into all the technicalities, but the idea is that when you put on the Oculus Go, you are inside of a world, right? That's what virtual reality is, is that you're entering into a different world that's three-dimensional, if you can see in 3D, which mine is spotty right now. So with the Oculus Go, you can turn around 360 degrees, and as you turn, the scene stays where it is and you turn around it and so you can see all 360 degrees of that scene. Super cool, right? So if there's you know, a train in the front and mountains in the back, you can turn and see both of those. Now, if you were to walk forward or backwards with the Oculus Go, then the whole scene moves with you. So you don't move forward within that scene. Same with side to side movements or up and down movements. And so well, when I first got my Oculus Go, I thought it was incredible. I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever done. Uh, it's super limited because you don't have that forward and backwards motion and side to side motion. Now with the Oculus Quest, you can set it up like that to just only have the 360 degree rotational freedom, but you can set up what's called a guardian. And the guardian is basically um, a boundary that you can stay within. So. Oh, I do want to hold this still. So there's there's these little tiny cameras, and I didn't know what they were at first, but there's four sensors on this Quest. And so when you're wearing this, it's actually taking a video of your entire surroundings. And so you set up your boundary that you want to use, and you can actually see, like if I have this on, I can see my whole living room, I can see the furniture, I can see like toys on the floor. And so I put it on and I mark my boundary, and then it says like, oh, you've got something over here, you might want to move that. So it kind of helps you stay safe within your zone. And then once you have the headset on, you can move freely around. And so the room you're in kind of stays put, sorry, the virtual room you're in stays put, but then you can move around within that room. Super cool and so much more immersive. Like it's it's just so much better. Um, the Quest also is has got way better graphics. I don't know the specs on that. I honestly, 
I'm not a techie person really, so I'm not sure what the specs are. All I know is that when I put on the Go, I'm like, oh, this is really cool. When I put on the Quest, I'm like, whoa, like I forget that I'm in virtual reality. Like it feels so much more real. The, with the Oculus Go, I can tell like, oh yeah, it's like I'm watching a movie or something. Like it's cool, but it's not like real. Oculus Quest feels way more real. And there's a Quest 2 out now, so I bet it's even better. I I really want it, but we'll, we'll see. I'll get it, I'm sure. I'll have it very soon. Um, and the other thing with Oculus Quest is that it has two remotes instead of one. And the remotes have the exact same capability as the headset. So they can go forward, back, up, down, side to side, which is a huge deal once you get into the vision therapy games. So that's like the basic difference between the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest. So now I wanna go in a little bit to more detail about what the difference is once you get inside the game. So I'm gonna start talking about Optics Trainer and then I'm gonna talk about Vivid Vision. So Optics Trainer is just a specific vision therapy app that has been designed by optometrists and scientists, I don't know, that all these games are designed to help people with strabismus, lazy eye, convergence, insufficiency, all sorts of things. So I'm gonna just talk about a couple games. If you wanna know about all the games and how they compare on both headsets, that's over on my website, um, lazyeyesolutions.com slash. So anyways, so the two games I'm gonna talk about, there's one called Balloons Pop. So if you are on the go, which is like the, the baby version, you are, you, you're standing in a spot and you can't move and there's balloons coming up and you have to pop the balloons that match, you know, the big balloon in the middle. I'll show a quick video so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see that you're just popping balloons and they look kind of 3D, but but not really. Like you can kind of tell that they're a little closer or further, but it's not super 3D and, and you can't actually, you're not touching them. Like your, your remote is actually just like a laser that like points to the balloon and pops it, right? So then switch over. If you were playing the exact same game on the Quest, you still are in a room that's like a racquetball court and there's a big balloon and then there's all these other balloons and you're still trying to pop the balloon that matches. But now you can move forwards and backwards. So like you can actually go behind the balloons, in front of the balloons, closer, further away. Um, you can really inter interact with the environment, which for me, where I have such limited stereopsis and ability to use both eyes, like it really makes a big difference in me being able to see that 3D and really sense it and feel it when I can move within that environment. Um, also like instead of the remote being a laser, you have like a pin in each hand and you actually have to reach the correct depth, like up, down, side to side. You have to actually get that depth correct before you hit the balloon. And so there's so much more feedback about like with, between your brain and your hands of like, where are you, when are you actually getting to that balloon and popping it? So it's a super big, big difference. I'm going to show a video and understand that in these videos that I'm showing, it's gonna look pretty flat because you're watching it in 2D on a 2D video, right? If you wanna see 3D, you have to be inside of a virtual reality, but you can still kind of get the idea of like how the movement goes. So here's that video. The, another game on Optics Trainer that I notice a really big difference with is Tappy Birds. So Tappy Birds is very simple. It's just practicing convergence and divergence. So there's basically four birds and one of them is closer to you and you have to touch the one that's closest. And I guess they have another mode where you're doing like closest to furthest away, but same difference. So in the Go version, that's not as good. The background is just kind of like blah. It's almost like blurry. I don't know, not blurry. It's just not like a super clear background that, that all looks real. It doesn't, I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm on a farm. Like it doesn't feel real at all. But on the quest, it totally feels real. Like even, and a lot of times with vision therapy, you need to try to see big. You're not just trying to focus on those birds. You're trying to see the whole scene and take it all in. And that is what helps you use both eyes. And so having the flock of birds like going across the background and having the farm feel so real 
really makes it easier to visualize that space. Also, when you're touching the birds, instead of just having like, you're not even, there's not even a laser. You're literally just using the touch pad and it's like, if it's the top one, touch here, bottom, middle, side. But if you're, you're on the Quest, then each of your remotes looks like a hand inside the game. So as you like reach, you can like put your hand behind the bird, in front of the bird, and you can really interact with that to try to really see which bird is closest and see the space between the birds, which is a huge deal. So yeah, same games, but totally different um, feel within the game. Same. Actually on Optics Trainer, there are two or three additional games that are available on the Oculus Quest that aren't available on the go. So you're definitely getting more for your money if you're getting, um, if you're, you're using Optics Trainer. So now I'll switch over to Vivid Vision, which is just another um, virtual reality vision therapy program. And I'm not going to necessarily compare the two. I will eventually, but not on this video. They're both, they're both great. But Vivid Vision, um, there, there's a few, same thing, a lot of the same types of ideas that one game has on the go versus the quest that it's just better. Like you can interact with the environment. A lot of those things are the same with every single game that you can move forward, back, side to side. You can move your remote around and you can really get a sense of where you are in space. Um, but Vivid Vision, there's, there's one. That I, the first time I did it was actually on the quest. And then I went and downloaded it on my Go to just try to see the difference. So it's called Pepper Picker. And you're basically just like in a greenhouse with these random plants that they're not pepper plants. It irritates me a little because I'm a gardener and I'm like, how come there's peppers growing on the same plant as oranges? Like, this is ridiculous. But I try to like let that go and just be like, okay, I'm in a greenhouse and there's all these plants and there's different fruit on the plants and you have to reach out and pick it. So your remotes are hands. And the first time I put on the quest and I started playing that game, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so real. Like the plants were like coming at me and I wanted to like reach out and touch them. Like so 3D, such a cool experience. Um, it's really great to visualize and you can walk completely around the whole greenhouse looking for the fruit. You can look up and down. And as you move, you know, with the headset, it totally changes where you're looking to you're like, oh, I want to look behind that leaf or under that leaf. So it's very inter interactive for that environment and reaching out, you have to reach the correct depth and you're seeing this hand and you feel like the um, vibration in your hand when you touch it. And so that's like another form of feedback that you're getting. So really cool. I love that game. It's one of my favorite games um, just for vision therapy in general. But then you play the exact same game, which is I think one of the best games on Vivid Vision and you play it on the go it's like, I don't even know. Like, I can't even play it. Maybe it's like my, my eyes don't work well enough. I have no idea. Like, there is no sense of depth at all when it comes to, like, the plants. They just are, like, kind of blurry. And you can't see the fruit half the time. And you're trying to, like, coordinate your head movements with your remote movements. Like, it's just... Anyways, I'm sure it's still a good game. Vivid Vision has... So many good games. I would personally recommend just taking this off the go because it seems kind of pointless, but the difference is just so huge. I wouldn't want to do Vivid Vision without the Pepper Picker game, which is why I would get the gut, the quest because it's such a good game. But if you're doing it on the go, it's like worthless. So that's one game. Another game that um, I want to talk about with Vivid Vision is Barnyard Bounce. Oh, you know what, before I do that, let's look at a video uh, really quick so that you can see the examples on Vivid Vision of what what it looks like for um, the Pepper Picker game. And I want you to know that what you're seeing is only what my left eye sees. And so one of the settings that's used is that my only my right eye can see the fruit that I'm picking. And, and so you're not gonna see that fruit. So you're gonna see this hand reaching and dropping like nothing into the basket, but just so you know, that's what's going on is that only my right eye can see the fruit. So there you go. Here's the video of what, what that looks like on the go first and then on the quest. A 
Okay, so now let's talk about Barnyard Bounce. This is just another game and I wanted to do this one because it's like the exact same game on the go and the quest. Like all the functions are the same. You don't even use a remote in this. No, you do use a remote. You don't use any buttons. You just kind of have to shake it to make the bird fly. Um, you can only turn 360 degrees. There's no um, up, down. You can't move around within the scene, right? So you would think like, okay, well that, that game, there's several games on Vivid Vision that are that way where it's actually the same game functionality on both headsets. But with, with, with all of them, it still is such a better stereopsis um, experience for me um, on the quest. Because even though it's this exact same game, you know, this, this barnyard bounce, I've got this little chicken and it's just like jumping up onto like these little islands, floating islands. I don't even know what they are. And when I'm on the go, it just looks like I'm like playing a video game on my phone or on the TV or something. It doesn't have a lot of depth. But then I play it on the quest and all of a sudden it feels so much more real and I'm able to see the leaves like floating around and I'm able to see those islands as like solid masses instead of just like a picture that I'm seeing. <laughs> So even the, on the games where the functionality isn't different, it's still a way better experience on the quest. Um, I, I don't think I've, I think I've been pretty clear of why, but just so that in case you don't understand, the quest is better than the go because it's so much more real with the graphics, right? That's huge. When it's good graphics, it's believable. And my brain has an easier time fusing the images from both eyes into one because it feels so much more real. And that will transfer into real life so much better. The second reason that it's the quest is so much better is because you can interact with the environment. And not every game has this ability, but m several of the games, I'll say, have the ability that you can move forward, backward, side to side, up and down, and really in interact, you know, use the remote and have the hands going behind bubbles or balloons or whatever aspect of the game you're playing it makes it so much easier to sense depth, which is a huge part of learning to use both eyes together, I promise. <laughs> um, so definitely get the Quest. It only costs like, I think the Quest 2 just came out and it's $300. And you, if you wanna get the Oculus Go, you're gonna just have to buy it used somewhere unless you wanna pay like $300 on Amazon. And yeah, there's a ton of Oculus Go's available used. If you go on Facebook, you could probably get one for a hundred bucks or less, but it's not worth it. I promise if you're going to invest all the money into vision therapy, which is thousands of dollars, invest the money into vivid vision or optics trainer, which requires like a monthly subscription, just get the right equipment and it'll make the biggest difference in your um, journey to using both eyes or strengthening a weak eye. So good luck with your journey. If you want to know more, and I, I am a chart person, so I went through every single game in both Optics Trainer and Vivid Vision, and I played them on each one and went through and wrote what the exact differences were that I saw between the Optics Trainer, or sorry, between the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest. So if you want to see those charts and see what, game by game what the differences are, go over to my website at lazyeyesolutions.com slash VR. And I hope to see you soon.